And uh, we were fortunate enough to grab this interview with the South Carolina Senator, uh, who joins me now live from D.C. Lindsay, thank you so much. I know you're a busy, busy guy, so we appreciate you coming Thanks, on Dan. One America. Thank you. And Real America, my brand new show here. Great. I'm going to get this out of the way before we get into your campaign, the pick for SCOTUS and everything else, okay. because I don't throw softballs, but I also don't throw BS punches like a lot of the left-wing media. We know what you said a few years ago. The left has said it. The right has said right. it. You all have played politics with this Supreme Court justice over the decades. The bottom line is, what's the law say, Lindsay, about the president appointing someone to the Supreme Court? No matter feelings, no matter a dying woman's wish, what's the Constitution say? Uh, president can nominate a va uh, can fill a vacancy up to their last day in office, uh, and there have been 19 nominations in an election year by a president, where the president and the Senate were the same party. 17 of the 19 were confirmed in an election year. Uh, there have been two people confirmed when the president was of one party, the Senate was of other, uh, another party in the history of the country. So precedent is on our side, the Constitution is on our side, and after Kavanaugh, all bets were off with me, so let's do it. Exactly, and that's why I don't care what he said, she said, on the left or the right over the past <laughs> yeah, several decades, right. Lindsay, we, right. we, we know it's out there, right. but can Google it and right. look it up. I did want to talk about that, though, yeah. because I noticed something, you know, I've been doing this about 22 years, I've seen a lot of uh, nominations and confirmations, and I've never seen it as nasty as when Brett Kavanaugh was up there. <sighs> and I got to say, I'll give it to you, uh, Lindsay, for coming out and being so emotional and so real in those hearings yeah. where you threw it yeah. right back at the left. The way they're treating these nominees when the right nominates yeah. one versus the way the right treats the left is appalling to me. Talk to me a little bit about that day right. when you made that, that passionate speech. <clears throat> well, I was pissed. <laughs> uh, I voted for Sotomayor and Kagan because... You know, Ginsburg, Thurman, Senator Thurman supported Ginsburg. Senator Hollings from South Carolina supported Scalia. It used to be you expected a president to pick somebody qualified different than you would have chosen. But that changed. Bork, uh, Thomas, uh, Alito, I mean, uh, Kavanaugh. Why is it always the conservative judge that gets the crap beat out of him? Name one liberal that was mistreated by a Republican Judiciary Committee when nominated by a Democratic president. Right. And so nothing is nasty I voted for their result. judges. Yeah, so I voted for their judges. And this is the way you pay back the system. Talking about a high school party 30 years ago, nobody could remember where it happened, when it happened, and the people claimed to be there said nothing happened. Three accusations by anonymous of people that were made up. I've known Brett for 20 years, one of the most decent people. Any Republican would have nominated him. And I want to thank President Trump for not pulling the plug on the guy. Yeah. I want to thank Brett Kavanaugh for taking all the crap. And if I helped, great. Susan Collins helped. The bottom line is if we'd pull the plug on Brett Kavanaugh, nobody would be supporting the Republican Party. So I was proud of Mitch McConnell. Mitch has done a hell of a job and now on to the next fight. Yeah, and this next fight is going to be a big one. Uh, we know that the president will announce his nominee, he's saying, by Saturday. He, of course, did the right thing, I think a very presidential thing, Lindsay, by saying, let's let yeah. um, Justice Ginsburg lie in state, let people pay their respects, have the funeral, then we can move on with politics. That was the right thing to do. Let's talk about his potential picks. We know there's two ladies at the top of the list. Um, what's, the, what's the scuttlebutt <coughs> around uh, Washington on which one it might be? Can you give us any type of clue? Well, I don't know for sure, but it's going to be a woman, and I think the two people most talked about is probably what he's thinking about, but it's going to be a highly qualified woman who can take it. Like Amy Barrett, she's got seven kids. She can handle anything. <laughs> uh, she's a, a, brilliant, a brilliant jurist. Uh, LaGoya from Florida is a trailblazing Cuban-American family fled Cuba. These are just outstanding, highly qualified constitutional uh, conservatives. And I don't know what the Democrats are going to do. I expect the nominee to be tested. This is a lifetime appo appointment. Uh, but we won't accept religious persecution. No, uh, no. I hope they don't go down that road. Well, and let's, speaking of persecution, the first thing out of Nancy Pelosi's mouth on the Sunday and Monday talk shows, she brought up the word impeachment. 
Uh, Lindsay, I don't understand <laughs> yeah. how in the hell you say you'll impeach a president for doing his job. Can you please explain to people where the speaker would ever even come up with that idea? And then you got Stepanopoulos and all them on the left. How many arrows you got in your quiver? I mean, let's get real. Stop playing yeah, politics hard, with our lives. Yeah. American people don't want to stand for this stuff anymore. Yeah. We're tired of it. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I didn't think you could impeach somebody based on a phone call where the where the country in question got the money ahead of schedule and it gave them lethal weapons where the other crowd wouldn't give the Ukraine anything other than like, you know, goggles. So the bottom line is they're going nuts. They've raised one hundred and fifty million dollars since the, the, the vacancy and uh, Justice Ginsburg, whether you agree with her or not, led an amazing life. I appreciate the president allowing the country to celebrate her life, but I also appreciate him doing his job, mm -hmm. which is to pick a replacement that starts Saturday. I don't know where the Democrats are coming from, but here's where I'm coming from. I expect the nominee to be tested, but not have their life ruined. Stay tuned. Yes, exactly. Um, let's talk a little bit about your race. It seems like uh, they're throwing out yeah. all the stops there, raising all kinds of money in South Carolina to get Mr. Graham out of office. How's it going down there? Yeah. Well, I, we're, my opponent will raise close to $100 million. Wow. Dan, I didn't misspeak. The most I've ever raised, anybody ever raised before this election, was $13 million in six years. He will be pushing $100 million for two reasons. Kavanaugh, the liberals hate my guts. I got in the way of the effort to destroy Brett Kavanaugh, and I've tried to help the president. We got off to a rocky start, the president and myself. We've become good friends, and uh, you know, I think he's doing a heck of a job, all the things that matter to me and the country. So, yeah, I'm just a target for, for the left. I'm the chairman of the committee. Uh, he's going to buy $5 million worth of television beginning tomorrow. Uh, that's 130 ads that every South Carolinian will see in a week. And I'm being outspent four to one. So lindsaygram.com, five or ten bucks helps. But the money coming in to take out the Republican majority is unbelievable. They can't buy South Carolina. It's all coming from out of the state. I just need enough to fight back. I want it to be about judges. I just need to get in the game. lindsaygram.com, five or ten bucks goes a long way. Yeah, we need fighters like you and patriots in there. And like I said, Lindsay, you've had your controversial statements. You've been for and against the president. It seems now you're on board. I think yeah. a lot of senators <laughs> yeah. and congressmen over the last four years have realized the American people want this Tough talking, no nonsense president who we yeah. picked from New York City that we knew wouldn't be political, no offense, like you guys, not a lifer. We wanted someone yeah. that was going to shake it up, totally. drain the swamp, and get yeah. things done for the American people, like picking a new SCOTUS seat. Uh, finally, let's talk about the debates. They're right around the corner. Tuesday. Um, yeah. what, what are you hearing out there? How is Mr. Biden preparing for this? Because he's barely on the campaign trail. The president's been out there nonstop for weeks. I watched a few of his stump speeches, and he's crushing it. I think his speeches are better now than in 2016. But all we see from Biden are these canned press conferences with five or six people. He's got notes. The reporters have notes. How's he going to handle a debate? Well, here's what I think. The president has been really smart. It's like an athlete. The harder you train, the better you do on game day. So he's out there every night uh, speaking for an hour and a half, jazzing up thousands of people. He sat down with ABC. He sat down with everybody and anybody. He's taken the tough questions. So I think he's ready for game day. And he said something is true. Joe Biden's been around for 40-something years. I know Joe Biden. I like him personally. He's been wrong about everything on foreign policy. Don't underestimate this guy. But here's what the president has going for him. Success. Before the virus, we had the strongest economy in modern history. Everybody was feeling it. African Americans, Hispanic families. Who's best able to bring us back after the virus? It's Trump, not Biden. We got the strongest military since Ronald Reagan. We've killed all the terrorists that we wanted to kill, and we're keeping them at bay. We've been a great friend of Israel. We've cut taxes. We're going to have 250 conservative judges on the court. Whether you like Trump or not personally, he's been a damn good president, and the way he's done this is being different. You know, we got off to a rocky start. I've come to like him. He likes him. That gives us a lot to talk about. The president has really changed the Mideast. We got peace deals with Israel, the UAE, Bahrain. He recognized the capital of Jerusalem as being the capital of Israel. I mean, this is historic stuff. If you're a conservative believing in lower taxes, less regulation, conservative judges, and a strong military, 
You've got nothing to complain about. No, you got a president who promises made, promises kept. Not to steal his slogan, but let's yeah. be real. He didn't keep all of them, but he kept a heck of a lot more than past presidents. And again, no offense, senators and congressmen that are in there every two, four, and six years. So this is a president sure. who's keeping his word. And like you said, if you have conservative values and you look at the track record in the amount of time he's been in office and the amount of pushback he's received from the left and the negative press coverage by the, let's talk about it, left-wing media, it's amazed he's gotten anything done, and he's done a lot. I know you've got to go. I, We're yeah. running out of time. Final thoughts here, uh, Lindsay, Thanks. before we let you go. This is a historic moment. We have a chance to shape the court for decades to come. Uh, I'm ready for the test. I know the nom nominee will be. President Trump's doing the right thing. He's been a great president. We've got to win. If we lose, God help the country. They'll pack the court. They'll do away with the Electoral College. Uh, they'll change the rules of the Senate. They'll make D.C. a state, on and on and on. We can't afford to lose. I feel good about it. I think we're going to win. We're going to fight for this nominee. I'm so glad you said that, and we'll leave it on that point, folks. Keep an eye on what the Democrats are trying to do. I heard trying to add Senate seats, make the District of Columbia an actual state so they can get more seats. We know they'll go liberal and then add more seats to the court. They want to yeah. just change, get rid of the Electoral College, just change the fabric of our nation so they can win and stay in power. That's what it comes down to, yes. and not doing their damn job, which is working for the American mm. people. Yes. Lindsay, I think you and I get along and agree on a lot of things. Thank you. We thank you so much for coming on One America and The Real America Show. You have a great day. Get back on those lines. Get that money coming in because we can't lose you in the Senate. Lindsaygram.com. God bless, Dan. Thanks. God bless you.